Okay, so now we have some content stored in our Contentful account. What we now need to do is access that from our application so that we can show it in a browser. Now to do this, we're gonna be using the Contentful client package, which we can install with NPM. So open up a new terminal and then type in NPM install Contentful like so. So this is a package that we can use in our application to connect to our Contentful account and then grab data from it. Now we want to get data from our index page. So let's open up this and this is where we're going to initially connect to Contentful. So then the first step in all of this is to create a function called get static props. I remember this is the function that we use to grab any data and then use that data to inject props into our component so we can render it in the browser. So let's create this. We export it. It's going to be an asynchronous function because we're going to fetch data inside it and it's called get static props. All right then. So inside here, we want to connect to contentful. Now to do that, we're going to have to use a function from that contentful package. So I'm going to import that. So we import create clients from contentful. All right. So this is the function we're going to use to set up a connection with contentful. So let me do that first of all. I'm gonna store the results of this in a constant, which I'm gonna call clients, but you can call it what you want. And I'm gonna set that equal to create client like so. All right, so it's this function's responsibility to make a connection to our contentful space so that then we can use this constant right here and a method on this constant to actually access the data. Now at the minute, this has no way of knowing which account or which space to connect to on Contentful because there will be thousands or hundreds of thousands. So we need to pass in some configuration options. So we need to pass in an object as an argument, first of all, and we need two properties. We need one for the space, and that's gonna be some kind of ID that we pass in. And we also need one for the access token to prove that we have the credentials to access this data. Now, how do we get both of these things? Well, we can go to our Contentful account, then go to settings and then go to API keys. And if we click on add API key, then we can scroll down here. We have a space ID, which is this thing right here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna add it in right here like so. And we also have this content delivery IP. So I'm going to click on that. And by the way, you can toggle on showing it right here. Don't use mine because by the time you do this tutorial, this will be long gone. <laughs> so there's no point in that, but I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it right here like so. So now this create client function knows how to connect to a specific space because this is the ID of the space. And this is our access token to say, look, we do have the required credentials to access this data. Without this thing, it wouldn't let us get the data. All right. Okay, then. So this is fine, but there is a small problem with this. And that is that if we were to upload this project to GitHub, then our access token is on show and the space and anyone could basically copy this and use it in their own projects then so it's not very secure so instead it would be better to use environment variables for things like this and environment variables are then not pushed up to github so they remain hidden so what i'm going to do is come to the root of the project and create a new file and this file is called dot env dot local so we can declare environment variables in here and what I'm going to do is create two of them. So contentful underscore space underscore ID. And I'm going to set that equal to this thing right here. So it doesn't need the quotations in the environment variable file. So that's the first one. The second one is going to be contentful. And then it's underscore access key. And we're going to set that equal to this thing right here. So let's grab that and paste it in and save this. Now, Next.js automatically grabs these environment variables and it adds them to the process object so we can access them inside this file. So I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to say process.env dot and then the name of the environment variable that I want. So to begin with, it's this one and paste that in. And then down here, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to say process.env 
dots and then I'm going to grab this second one over here and I'm going to paste it in right here. So this is much better now because if we push this code up to GitHub, then all the users will see if they're looking at my repository is this thing and this thing. And this file over here is not going to get pushed up to GitHub. So they won't know what these different values are. So this is more secure. All right then, so I'm going to save that now. So now we've connected basically to Contentful and then we use this client constant to interact with Contentful to grab the data we need. So let's do that. I'm going to say down here const and I'm going to say res for response is equal to await clients dot get entries. So this is a function that we can use to get items from our contentful space. Now, it doesn't know what content type to get. We only have recipes in here, right? But if we add other content models as well, like blog posts or news items, then it wouldn't know what type of content to get. So we have to specify that by passing in an options object. And then one property inside here is the content underscore type. And this is basically the content type we want to grab. So we want to grab the recipe, right? And that is the identifier for this content type. Take a look at this. This is the ID we use right here. So we pass that in as the content type. And now it knows to grab all of those entries, all of the different recipes. So once we have those, they're stored on an items property inside the response object. Now, ultimately, we need to return an object inside get static props. And inside this object, we have a props property, which is an object in itself. And then any item that we add inside this object is passed through as a prop to the recipes component. So I'm going to say there's one called recipes. You can call it what you want, but it makes sense to call it recipes, right? And I'm going to set that equal to the response dot items, which is all of the items we get back from this get entries function. So now we have this recipes prop and we can pass it in here by destructuring like so. And remember, all of this, if you don't understand what get static props is, all of this is explained in my crash course. The link to that is down below. Anyway. Let's just for now log these to the console. So console.log recipes like so, just to make sure this has worked. I'm going to go over to our project and open up the console. So let's go to the console. And if I refresh now, we get an error. And the error is because we've added environment variables. And when we do that, we have to restart the server. So let me open up the terminal again. I'm going to cancel out of this by clicking Control C and yes. And then I'm going to run again npm run dev just to restart that server so that we have access to the environment variables on the process object again. So if we do that and now come over here, we don't get the error, but we do see this array of items, which is the recipes we're logging out right here. So this has worked. And if we open this up, we can see all of the different recipes. Each one has a fields property, which is where all the different fields are. And also this system property where we have extra metadata about this particular item. So now we have access to this data. The next step is to output it in the browser. And that's what we're going to do in the next lesson.